All right, uh, we're back. We are game 1014. We're live on YouTube right now. And uh, it is week two, uh, part one of our lecture series. This is, we're talking about member rules today. And then we're going to get into um, some assignment details. There is a lab that's going to be due at the end of class. So we have posted on Blackboard for you guys. Now, because I'm recording here, I've got like this crazy microphone. I won't be walking around as much over there. Uh, and nothing else. For the people that are new that weren't here last week, we'll have a discussion at the break. Uh, well, we'll see who, if you're going to join your own team or if you're going to be part of some other team in some way. We'll see how that works out. Um, okay, so let's talk about some roles. All right. No problem. All right, so here we go. So, um, just to recap what we talked about last week. So last week, we kind of did some team forming. Again, we broke out those big teams of seven and, and sometimes larger teams, and we made them smaller. There's quite a few people that didn't show up. I think it was like five or six people last week that just did not show up. Remember what I said was that if you don't show up, you don't get marks. I know there are some extraneous circumstances sometimes that prevents people from coming, and that's fine. Uh, but for the most part, if you're not here physically and we have an exercise in class, you don't get the mark right if you're part of something else like for example these little exercises are like worth one percent of your final grade but however let's say you're working on um and we're gonna look at the schedule for a second if you're working on the final your or your releases let's take a look at the release schedule here so if you look at this last week we, we kind of did this we started talking about some uh our teams and everything else GitHub, we're going to be talking about today and a bit of some new tools I'm going to introduce. I'm going to do more with GitHub next week. And notice that there are some chapters in the book, 12, 13, 14, 16. I'm not going to be covering these until later on, right? So the midterm is going to be made up of um, the stuff that I'm going to be talking about in class. If I don't talk about it and it's in the book, I'm not going to cover it on the exam, okay? So it's only the stuff I cover. The most important things I'll be talking to you about, I'll say, hey, this is going to be on your exam. Please take note of that or watch the video again, okay? So this week, we're really talking about how you structure your folders and everything else. Up on Blackboard, up on Blackboard, I put up several links. This is for both first section and second section. The same stuff I'm going to be talking about again. Some of these links I've already put up on Slack from last week. Again, if you're new, please sign up for Slack. If you look up uh, week one uh on blackboard you'll see a link to join slack please go there and 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 um and sign up for slack uh in the content area okay so um so these links are the ones i'm showing i also have the powerpoint that i'm going to be talking about today and inside my assignment section there's going to be lab number two lab one is done uh marks will be coming in today lab two um, there's going to be something that's going to be due by the end of class. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be updating your game design document to include a list of your features for your game that you need completed for your first playable release that is due in week four. So right now we're sitting at week two. Two more weeks from now, your first playable release is due, right? You and your team. So I want you to list all the features of your game. That's including everything you want to include in your game for the first release, right? Now that may not include everything. That's just the stuff for your first week. So producers, my recommendation is you work with your uh, software engineers today to get that information, okay? Because we need to put that together. Second point is make sure that you, that a something, a task is assigned to each of your team members, okay? So everyone's got something to do for next week. If someone's got nothing to do for next week, then that's a problem, right? It's gonna be a problem for me. It's gonna be a problem for you guys too. That means you got an extra team member and I can just take them out and do something else with them right? I want everyone to have something to do every single week. And we're going to be talking about how that can happen. Um, ensure your GitHub repo is structured so that your project has the following top level folders, assets, content, and scripts. We're going to talk about that today. I'm going to show you how to do that by the end of class. Um, and how do you submit? I want your game design document every week. I'm going to be asking you for your updated game design document. There's going to be something else I'm going to get you to add or change or whatever. Um, and that's part of the, the um, participation marks. Um, because you're going to be asked to do stuff. A link to your main repo on GitHub separately listed in a comment in your submission. That's what I want. Again, we already did that last week, but I want that kind of there so I can click on it quickly and then see your repo. 
and then a list of your team members that are present today. So if there's someone that's missing, list them as not present, right, or missing. Okay, so someone, I mean, again, I see a team over there that's got three. Are you missing someone? Yeah, so those people, you're going to, when you put your, your game doc document together at the end or the, the external document today, you're going to say these two people missing, right? And those people are not going to get marks today for the stuff that we're doing, okay? So the way it works is that every week you come in, you produce something, and that's why it's important you're here. Unless there's a specific reason you can't be here due to some kind of medical emergency or something else, you need to let me know ahead of time. If you're going to be late, please let me know, just out of courtesy so I know just I can start. Right? I'm trying to uh, wait for you guys to get going, but if I can start, that'd be great. So this is what this is due by the end of today. It's worth 1% of your final grade for each of your team members that are present today. Right? Now, there are 10 of these throughout the semester. That means 10% of your final mark hinges on you being class, submitting something, and participating um, in the, in the uh, exercise. Okay? There's different, gonna be different exercises every week. Uh, sometimes just uh, updating your document. Other times, we're going to be doing some plate testing. There might be some other exercise that I want you to do, but there's something to do every single week. Okay, like, for example, this team, I think you guys are missing one person too, right? I think it's, I think it's five, or is it, or is it four? You got everyone? Okay. Um, so yeah, so we're sitting there at um, with, with lab two. So I wanted to talk about that. So that's due by the end. I'm gonna give you some time uh, very shortly where you can sit with your teams and get that done in class. I'm not looking for it to be done after. Um, so that's one thing. Let's talk about the stuff that we kind of talked about last week. We talked about some roles and I, and I wanna kind of go over these roles. I talked about the producer, right? The producer's like a manager. I want you to think of it like that. And I kind of said similar to a project manager here. Um, he or she is in charge of scheduling tasks and tracking tasks. So think about when the thing I'm asking you to do today in your lab too, I want a list of activities that you're going to do. And I want a little, maybe a little table inside your external document that you kind of list who's doing what for the next couple of weeks. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. I don't need the entire schedule because it's too big, but just a little bit of an idea of who's doing what. What features you're gonna you, you're gonna you're, you're you know you're gonna include in your uh, in your build, and your producer is gonna be in charge of doing that. Any kind of documentation, presentation documents, and so on, um, all that is the producer's um, responsibility. However, question for you producers: Is that the only thing that you're required to do? What do you think? No, it's not. That's your primary goal. Uh, one thing about this is if you're going to say a primary role or a secondary role, this would be your primary role. Your secondary roles would be helping everyone else with whatever needs to be helped out with. For example, if you need some more coding help or, you know, you need to get some more art assets or whatever to help other people to get things done, you're in charge of that. I'm not expecting you just to do, being, just to do documentation. However, the documentation is going to be on you if it's not done properly, right? So if I have a problem, I go, like, this documentation is crap, right? That's what, producers? It's on you right? Because you're responsible for getting it together, right? I mean, that's your main responsibility. You have sub responsibilities, but that's your main one. Software engineer, you're going to be the GitHub director. That means you're in charge of the repo, how it's managed. If the repo suddenly disappears, if it breaks, you break your build, any of that stuff, it's on you, right? That means please be careful. You know, this is your responsibility. Um, is this the only thing you're going to do, the stuff that's listed here? Absolutely not. I expect you guys to help out with the producer, with the art director, with testing, a bunch of other stuff that you want to be involved with because not everybody will be able to be engaged every single week because you have other things going on, right? So it's a bit of flexibility here, but your primary role is these things. GitHub director, you're going to manage each software release. That means that you're in charge of making sure that the next build, which is your first playable, is ready to go, right? That's your that's your rule, right? Um, you're going to ensure that all the game features that you agreed on with your team are implemented for your first playable and for each other release, whatever you decide on, right? Um, and you're also going to be required to develop this scalable build structure. I don't want one file where you keep on adding stuff to one file in your JavaScript. Okay, that is incorrect. That is bad form, right? So I want you to split across multiple files. We're going to be talking about how to do that over today and next week, right? Um, these are the things you're going to be involved with, the structure of the code, the, the project. It's in your hands. Any questions around producer and software engineer? So roles. Again, these are primary roles. 
However, there are secondary functionalities and roles that you can take on. Um, yes? Do you go as far as saying the primary role is what we get marked on? I would say so. I would say that question was, is the primary role what you're going to get marked on? Yeah. So let's say, for example, you know, you and your team do a presentation and I look at the presentation and there's obvious gaps or things that are missing. For example, let's say your art director for your first playable has zero assets. That's not on the, well, the team is going to stop. I'm going to talk to the team too. I mean, something happened. Like what happened to the art director? Did he do anything for the first playable? Right? Because if it's just empty, He's going to get a zero for that, right? For you guys, though, you're going to be impacted too because you didn't do anything to help them, right? If the art assets are really crappy, right, I'm going to talk to other people too. I'm looking and say, or if it doesn't make any sense, like if you, have, if you have an asset, a sound or art asset that makes no sense with your game, who am I going to talk to? The game designer. I'm going to say, game designer, wait a minute. Hold on a second. How did you approve this art asset from the art director? He just grabbed some random thing and you used it, right? And if you say, well, it's a placeholder, I'm like, no, 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 right? There's going to be certain things that are going to be allowed and other placeholders that you're going to have to, you're not going to be allowed to do. So these two roles, although they're fluid, these are the primary ways I'm going to be able to kind of give you responsibility so that not everyone does everything. So everyone's responsible for some area. It doesn't mean that you're, you can't do anything else. I'm not saying, hey, don't touch the, so the software if you're an art director. No, 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 no. It just means that's not your primary function. And when it comes to making decisions... Right, the software engineer, whoever the prime is for the software engineering, he's the final word for the decisions, right? So that there's no arguments. Yes. When it comes to committing the code, is it a must code? Software engineer commits the final code, right? Yeah, he's asking if you want the code committed. I always want the code committed. Yeah. I'll talk about it. We'll talk about how to do that. It's got to be committed. You have to have multiple commits. You can't just if you do a function, commit. New function, commit. You know, change, commit. Deletion, commit. Right? It's got to be that you know that kind of stuff, so that you have a, a record, a history of your build uh, over the over the uh, the course of of this semester. All right. So let's take a look at uh, art director. Art director, they manage the acquisition and development of art. Acquisition means you got it from somewhere, right? You can procure it, buy it, however you want to do it, but you get it from somewhere, right? Um, or you can develop it. If you've got the skill and you want to use Blender or Photoshop or Maya or something to develop your art, your art assets, that's up to you. It's not required, though. You can just get them from Open Game Art, which we shared with you last week, right? Now, they've got to match with the game design requirements, and that's what I put in here, too. So that means you've got to work hand-in-hand -hand with your game designer to make sure that they're valid. The sound and art assets make sense for your game, right? If they don't make sense, I'm going to come to you and go, the both people, I'm going to say, guys, what happened? Game designer, you accepted these assets? Game art director, what's going on? Where did you get this stuff from? It sucks, right? And then we'll have a conversation. And then you'll get marked accordingly. All right, quality assurance manager. What do they do? It's not just playing around with a game, OK? You don't just play. You test. And what I want from you is a test plan. So when you start testing the game inside of your external document, I want you to put the results of your tests. In other words, let's say, for example, I'm testing how the game moves around, right? Does the game, does the movement work? Yes, check. Okay, the game movement works. It's been validated. I've got sign off from the engineer, you know, whatever. Make sure that everyone agrees. Yeah, you know, guys, I've tested it. It looks like it's good. Good. What if you say everything is good, but then when we go to the release, it sucks. It doesn't work. Guess what? It's on you, right? Because it's your job to test. Everybody here has a job for the next two weeks. There's got to be something that everyone's doing, right? Also, make sure that all your releases are bug-free, or at least that the bugs are categorized and you know about them. And they're not, you know, kind of, it's not going to break your build. All right? And make sure you provide feedback to the team about the game features and playability. In other words, sure, I mean, maybe you want to make an ultra-realistic game, but sometimes you're going to struggle. Do we really want to make a super-realistic game? Chances are no, and I'll tell you why. It's going to be unplayable. Right? The more realistic it is, the more unplayable it becomes. It becomes too much like real life, which means there's too much upkeep. It's too difficult, right? The less realism, maybe the more playability. And you have to kind of strike a good balance. What balance do you want for your game, right? It's always this idea of realism versus playability. It doesn't matter whether you're playing Dungeons & Dragons, a tabletop game, 
or whether you're playing a video game or making a video game, you want to make sure that there's that balance. And that's what the quality assurance manager should be able to give feedback to the designer and say, hey, you know what, it's too hard. Or, you know what, I think we need to soften up on some of these rules in terms of mechanics because it's not working. You know, it just doesn't flow properly. These are the kind of feedback that the quality assurance manager can give back. And then finally, the, the game designer. Who's in charge of making the rules? Think about him making a board game. You're the game designer, you make the board game. You make the rules. How do you move around the board, right? As an example, how do you score? How do you um, gain levels? How do you move from one level to the other? How do you defeat your enemies? How do you go around them? What kind of game mechanic? What does your level look like? You know, those kind of things. The game designer is in charge of all that. At least he has the final word. You can work with your entire team on it. They can give you feedback. But at the end of the day, the game designer has the final word on how things are going to look, feel, and everything else, right? So, again, they plan each game level. And, again, of course, all of these roles are interactive. No, None of these roles are in a vacuum. You don't work alone in a silo. It's not like that. You all work together, but everyone has a primary function. That's where I'm going with this. So I had some questions in the email saying, like, so that means if I'm a producer, I don't have to do anything else? The answer is absolutely not, you crazy man, right? You all have to do stuff. You have to help each other. It's it, This is a team effort, and you're all required to, to do something every week. Any questions about roles, right? So everyone should have a role by now except for the newcomers. People who weren't here last week, we're going to see what we're going to do with them later on today, okay? All right, let's talk about some milestones. This stuff came right out of last semester, and I wanted to kind of talk about this again because it's super important. So again, your first playable, this idea of your first major milestone, um, it's due two weeks from now. Right? I mean, what am I looking for? I'm looking for basic mechanics. And I mean that, for example, you're making a some kind of platformer game. You gotta have movement, you gotta have the ability to jump. Platformer, right? It's gotta work. Like those basic things gotta be in place, right? If you don't use physics, it's okay. You can make it so it's faux physics, so it kind of looks like it's jumping and landing. That's fine. But it's gotta work. Do I need scoring? Uh, sorry, scoring? No, I don't. Do I need sound? No, I don't, not for next week. But I need some basic art assets, backgrounds, what the, what the uh, platforms are going to look like for a single level, movement, collisions, all of those things should be in place for two weeks from now. Okay? If you can't get that stuff done for two weeks, you think you got a lot of time. There's no time. There's zero time to do this kind of stuff. You gotta, either you should have started already or you got to start today. Right? Don't try and not work together throughout the week. There's got to be some time where your, your producer schedules time together to build things like getting assets, um, you know, thinking about what has to be included in the game, what's not going to be included, how does your build look like, working on some coding. All that stuff's got to be done throughout the, game, uh, throughout the week, and you've got to set aside a reasonable number of hours to do that. It can't be 100 hours, obviously, but you need to put in some time that makes sense. Yeah. So the question is, sorry, because I'm recording. Yeah. The question is, do I want to see a basic enemy for the first playable? And you know, the answer is I probably would. I think it's a good idea to show collisions. I mean, if it's some kind of top-down shooter game, maybe there's some kind of thing falling on the player, the avatar, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't expect explosions, but I do expect the player to disappear, right? And maybe reappear afterwards, like some kind of feedback to the user that you got hit, right? Yeah. Um, if you're getting hit by an enemy, if an enemy's chasing you, the enemy's got to be able to, you got to see the enemy on the screen, maybe even if it goes back and forth, yeah, yeah, right? That's, that's There's got to be something that, that shows some basic <laughs> obstacle avoidance or that there, it shows that what part of the game is. The other thing I want to talk about is I need the, ba the, the core mechanic to be in place. What do I mean by core mechanic? Think about a platformer. If I just make a Mario platformer, what am I, am I doing anything different? No, it, it's boring and there's nothing new. It's just a Mario platformer. Or if I'm doing an Asteroids game, it's really super boring, right? I don't want a standard Asteroids game remake or, or, or a, a Mario 1-1 world. I don't want that. I want it so that, hey, I'm making a, a grappling hook uh, you know, platforming game where I shoot my grappling hook and I swing over from one platform to the other. That's the core mechanic that I'm talking about. Something different, yeah. So for example, uh, one attack animation would be a good example. You can have an attack animation, it's fine, but I'm talking about like what makes your game different? What is your game like? I mean, if your game is just exactly like the other game, it doesn't make any sense. For example, let's say there's that one group that was making that top down game. Who is it? Making that top down game? Yeah, you guys, right? Where you had that uh, line of sight vision or whatever. 
that idea, the look and feel of the top down, the camera position, all that stuff should be in place. Movement, collisions, boundaries. It doesn't have to be a completed level. It just has to look like you've got some basics down, like the building blocks of your game should be in place. Your first play, but should be somehow playable. That's key, you know, hence playable. If it's just someone like last semester who kind of said, well, it really doesn't do anything right now. Um, I just, you know, there's a background and a platform, but there's no movement and there's no ending. It's not playable. Therefore, you failed. All right. If it's not playable, it doesn't work. It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't meet requirements. Okay. So that's the stuff. Do I have to have all the assets? Do I need animations? No, I don't need animations. That can be added later on in your in your alpha build. But you must have basic mechanics in place, basic rules of play. Like for example, there's a game in the first section where they have uh, they collide. They have trucks that kind of collide against each other over and over again. They have basic movement already. They have that whole collision mechanic. It's in place. It looks like the kind of game they want to make. It's not perfect. There's assets that are missing, but it looks pretty good. Okay. Now this says 12 to 18 months. We don't have 12 to 18 months. We have two weeks. Okay. That's almost as much time we have to make this thing. So you need to start right away. Okay. Your alpha build. Okay. Your alpha build. So let's say you finish your first playable. Remember, your first playable is going to be two parts. There's 5% final grade for the entire group, right? For the presentation that you're going to put together from uh, elements from your game design document. It's already there, like wireframes. Hopefully, you can clean up those wireframes by then, right? Not a, not a physical drawing and a picture, right? Uh, by then, right? Wireframes, your inspiration. I'm going to give you a whole set of criteria for the, for the presentation, right? And then there's going to be a part, a part 10% for your actual build. So that's 15% of your final grade due in two weeks, right? Guys, this is like, you know, game changing, no pun intended, stuff. It's, it's happening. That's why I'm getting you to move forward on this stuff now. And that's why I'm trying to incent you by getting you to produce something every week on your game design document and think about what you're building, get you guys going because I can't wait till next week. It's just not possible. And there's no way in one week you can build what I'm asking you to build. You should have already started is the answer. Is there time? Yes, there's still time, but you need to devote some time out of class to get this done and some class time as well. All right, so your alpha build. And if you look at the schedule again, so if I go back to the schedule for the course. So again, we're looking at week four. We're in we're we're sitting at week two. Week four is your where your first playable. You get a couple weeks in mid and then sometime around calendar week 10, you've got your alpha um, uh, due, right? as well as your presentation and the build, right? Again, it's worth 15% of your final grade. 15 here, 15 here, 20 here. That's a lot of marks before week 10, right? Plus every week there's something which is worth 1% of your final grade. So again, participation, building something every week, 10%. You know, your midterm, uh, your first playable, your alpha and your beta, they're all worth 15% each. And then finally your code release, I think the final code release is worth 20. So if you think about this, by your alpha, and if I switch back to this, I think about this. This is like the key milestone. Most of your gameplay functionality is already there, functionality-wise. Um, more of your assets are available. You might have multiple levels. Definitely your finite state machine is in place where you have a beginning screen, the playable screen, and an end screen. Some kind of like, hey, start the game. You know, give a chance to, for the user to start. Then the playable level. Then the end screen when you die, all right? Like there's gotta be that kind of uh, breaking up. So there's gonna be multiple uh, scenes by then. You, if you're gonna have multiple levels, the second level is due by the alpha release, right? Level two, right? Level one is due next week or two weeks from now. Sorry, I don't wanna scare you. Level two is due by week eight, right? Which is way down the line, all right? Or week 10. And then if you think about it, um, by week 13, that's your beta, but between week 10 and week 13, there's something called a code freeze, right? We talked about this last semester, it wasn't me, but the code freeze basically says, hey, we're not gonna do anything after alpha, right? Alpha, once alpha's done, you got one more week of development and then there's a code freeze. Why do we do that? Why do we do a code freeze? Besides what it says up here. Anybody have an idea? Yeah. Okay, prevents, what you said? Feature creep, scope creep, yeah, I like it. Um, so yes, that's one reason. The other reason why is you'll never finish, right? <laughs> never finish, man. If I let you guys keep developing forever, I'm not gonna finish your game, right? 
you got to stop development at some point. You got to think about out today. This is why this is so critical today. Think about mm -hmm. what your minimum viable product is today. What is the minimum amount of work that you have to do to get your first playable done two weeks from now, right? What is the minimal amount of work that you need, the minimal feature set you need to get going for alpha? What is the minimal features that you need for beta, right? When you go to beta, there is no more code. You're not adding any more thing. Your codes and assets are complete by beta. So somewhere between alpha and beta, there's this code freeze that happens, right? You don't add anything else. All you do is tweak. You fix bugs, right? You make it look a little nicer. And from beta to your final release, that's all you're doing, just tweaking, making sure it looks nicer, fixing bugs, fixing the features that are already there, right? So there's a feature that's incomplete or not fully fleshed out. That's what you do with it, okay? Example, I have some particle effects, but they're very basic, and I want to flesh them out. I want to add more part of, uh, particle effects. I want to add screen shape. I want to make it so it's a little, a little juicier, right? That's what you're going to be doing between code freeze and your, uh, your final release. No more extra code. So you're not adding new features because of you know what we're saying here, which is feature creep. All right, so your beta comes and goes, and then you're left with this idea of a code release candidate or the final release for us, right? Again, think about this as a prototype that you're producing because that's all we can really do here by around week the last week, right? So the last week is really critical, right? Well, week 14, or the, the second last week, we're gonna do this post-mortem. So how did it go? How did this, this semester go? Was it good? Was it bad? You know, there's going to be a whole set of criteria around your postmortem. How did it go, right? Postmortem means after the project is done, right? That's a bad way of saying it. Best, better to say it as lessons learned. What are the lessons learned, right? And I want you to develop those lessons learned and include them in your final presentation. So, hey, you gather your lessons learned. You talk to your team, almost like a little team meeting, and say, this is stuff that really went well, this stuff that really sucked, and then you're going to present it in your final release, right? Your final release should really literally be the final version of your code. This is it. It's going to be live on, on the internet, okay? It's going to be fully functional, however you've decided, whatever features you've decided to add in, and it's going to be playable. Each presentation week when you're together, so that's week four, week 10, week 13, and week 15. Notice these are really close together because you're practicing. You're practicing honing your skills, right, between all these weeks. So that way by the final week, your pitch is perfect, right? When you're talking about your presentation, you know your product. You love your product. You know how to play your game. You've gone through the presentation. We've seen the presentation, right? And now you're doing this, you know, um, your final pitch. And if you think about it, if you're going to take this to a game jam, it'd be here where you're ready to go. You have this idea um, that you're doing. You're, you're, you're ready to produce this prototype, and it's ready to go. Now, it's not a lot of time, 15 weeks. You might say, holy crap, it's a lot of time. Nah, because you're not just doing this course. You're not spending, you know, um, five days a week preparing and then meeting me on Fridays. It's not happening like that, right? You're only going to have a few hours a week or, you know, five or six hours a week, let's say max, where you meet and, um, and then meet me on Fridays with some, so I can look at what you've got going on. Some of you have already have some progress. Who's already started with their game build? Anybody? I got one. I got two groups. You guys? No? You guys got to start, man. <laughs> you guys got to start right away. These guys too in front of you. You guys got to start today, right? All right, so any questions around, um, the reason why I brought these forward is because I think people forget, and just from a high level look, and don't worry about what's in here because you probably can't see it, it's too small. But in here, I want you to think about this, your first playable, your alpha, your code freeze, your beta, and then your code release. And on the left, you can see that every department, engineering, art, design, sound, localization, we don't have to think about right now, production, let's say, everyone has a role, every single release, and if anything, this comes right from the book. Um, I want you to think about this as a matrix. So you, even if you can't see the details, it just doesn't matter. The PowerPoint's up online for you, right? Um, and the idea here is that every release, everybody has something to do. Every department, which is what you guys represent. You guys are department heads. If you guys were on the, on the Starship Enterprise, right? If you're a Star Trek fan, right? You guys would all be the chief engineers, you know, the chief security officers, those kind of things. That's what you guys would be, right? From an analogy perspective. And we can imagine, let's with that analogy, that you guys have a staff that work for you. There is no staff. It's just you, right? And, of course, you have your team. So you can, you can think about your staff as your team. So art director, you have three people on your team, right, in this case, in, in the first row. You know, engineer, you have four people on your team for the most part, or three people, right? Producer, you have three or four people on your team as people that can help you out, okay? 
And that's how I want you to think about it as a prime role and then things that you want to do to make this, uh, this whole thing work. Any questions around this? This is just a map of what we're going to be doing again, just to review things we talked about last week, just to solidify and answer some of your questions to know what the expectations are over the next several weeks. Okay. So today, what I want you to do, and we're sitting at, uh, you know, kind of in, in, we're kind of in about half an hour now. I want you to take some time now. I'm going to pause the video or stop the video, this, for this version. Work with your teams, and I'm going to work with these people here to find out what, what I'm doing with them, right? Work, work with your teams to finish lab two. Okay, that's what I want you to do right now, okay? That lab two, and the reason why I'm breaking it up like that is because I got, if I get you to do lab two at the end, we're not going to get lab two done, right? Because I got lots of technical stuff that I got to talk about from now until the end, and it's going to be GitHub. It's going to be CreateJS. It's going to be Visual Studio Code. It's going to be Node.js. It's going to be Bower. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy, right? So before we get into the craziness that I'm going to be talking about, and I expect everybody to be coding today because it's going to be on your exam. You need to know, understand what's happening. So don't take a step back, right? Pay attention at the minimum. I recommend you work with me on this if you can, right? So that way you get enough experience that when you, when you come to the exam time, I can ask the questions and you're going to be doing fine. Remember that I'm only going to ask questions that are pertinent, that things that I've covered. If I haven't covered them and they're in the book, they're not game for the exam. I'm not going to do that to you, all right? So let's take, uh, I want to give you guys 15 minutes, right? We're sitting at around 135 right now, right? I'm going to give you 15 minutes to get together with your teams, finish lab two, okay? And then we'll come back and we'll start recording. For the people that are new, I'm going to talk with you in a, in a second. And when I start recording again, we might take a little break before that, but I'm going to start recording and talk about this technical part, okay?